What up everybody and welcome back to Baz on Blades. Now on my channel I typically talk about knives. We're going to talk about something a little bit different today. Every once in a while I like to touch on a firearm or two and uh, my philosophy behind the firearms that I choose and the way that I set them up. Because let's face it, even though I'm a knife guy, uh, I don't want to get in a knife fight. Uh, when you get in a knife fight, you get cut. Uh, I don't like being cut. I, t I really don't want to be seriously or severely cut in a knife fight. Uh, if I have to defend myself, defend my home, typically I'm going to do it with a firearm. Now, I'm not a firearm nut. I don't have a huge firearm collection. Uh, the government and the people don't have to worry about me trying to take over the world. That's not my purpose in life at all. I just want to be able to defend myself, defend my home, and defend my family and friends. And uh, that's it, guys. That's it. Self-defense. Uh, I'm not looking for any trouble. I don't go out looking for any trouble. I've never been in any trouble. And uh, that's the typical American uh, gun owner. We're not criminals. We are normal people that just want to defend ourselves. What we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about a home defense shotgun. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, some of the things that I've got on my shotgun, I'm going to name some brand names. Some of them I won't. It's not important what brand you go with. Uh, it's not important what type of shotgun you go with outside of you want a reliable, dependable shotgun. Um, but, this is the way I've set my shotgun up and my philosophy as far as defending my home. Now, what I have chosen is a Remington 870. This is a pump action shotgun from Remington Arms. Uh, let's go ahead and show that this firearm is clear for all the safety Nazis. Uh, it is clear. All right, guys. Now, the good old Remington 870, or maybe you've got a Mossberg 500, uh, or maybe you've got a Beretta, maybe you've got a semi-auto shotgun. Uh, it doesn't have to be what I have. Uh, what you are looking for overall is just the wide, um, round capacity of a shotgun. And what I'm talking about is this. In a shotgun, uh, you've got all different types of shot shells, uh, weight and pellet types in your shot shells because a shotgun basically it started out as a hunting firearm. Uh, you can hunt with this firearm. There's sporting competitions, shooting competitions like shooting at clays. Um, a shotgun is a very, very good combat weapon. It really came into its own in World War II and the 12 gauge shotgun built um, a very, very strong reputation uh, in warfare. Therefore, it translates well to a home defense weapon. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not small like a pistol. It doesn't have the high round count like an AR-15, but it is a devastating weapon. Uh, I typically, I run nine pellet double lock buck in mine. Um, and my, let's set this down, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. My typical round that I use is the Federal Premium uh, 9 Pellet Double Lot. That is uh, one of their tactical line of ammunitions for the shotgun. It does feature their flight control wad and that is a cup type of wad that is within that shot shell and it keeps the shot together uh, in a tighter shot pattern uh, across a longer distance. It's a fantastic, fantastic ammunition. And uh, this is actually a low recoil. Uh, you lose, I think, about 150 feet per second off of the shot velocity. Uh, I believe that it is still, it's not quite it's about 1,200 feet per second, I believe. Uh, 1,200 feet per second being shot with a double lot buck, uh, and that's 30 caliber pellets. Nine 30 caliber pellets at 1,200 feet per second. 
and over about 25 yards this will produce a shot pattern that will fit every shot within the typical torso size of a adult male. Um, that would be, to say the least, it would be devastating to anybody that was seeking to do you harm, do your family harm. Um, I, I, I could not imagine being shot uh, by this ammunition. It would totally destroy center mass on a, uh, an adult male. So, what we're going to talk about here is the way I've got this shotgun set up. Now, I'm not a firearms expert. I don't claim to be a firearms expert. I do a lot of research before I buy a firearm uh, because, yet again, I'm very realistic about what I know and what I don't know. And uh, I chose to go with the Remington 870 for this reason. It's probably the most popular pump shotgun out there. It has a very, very wide range of aftermarket parts that are available for it. Everything on this shotgun, uh, from the furniture, the buttstock, and the foregrip, um, to the trigger group, to the safety, to the sights. Uh, you can see on this version right here, I have a light attached. I have a side saddle for extending my uh, round count on it. Uh, this shotgun, the Remington 870, is a very versatile firearm. Now the same can be said for the Mossberg 500 uh, and then you've got you know a lot of high-end semi-auto uh, shotguns. You've got Beretta and Benelli and I mean just on and on and on guys. So it really your brand doesn't matter as much as your overall build and what you're looking to do is this. A shotgun is a fairly long gun. It's a long gun, okay? And you've got to be able to maneuver this around your home. Now, you're in your home, it's dark, and you hear a noise, you keep a shotgun as your go-to for home defense. Remember, it's gonna be dark. You've got every wall, every corner, every piece of furniture, uh, every door frame that you have got to maneuver around. So you don't want daddy's or granddaddy's super long barreled hunting shotgun. You want something you can shoulder and maneuver around your home and around obstacles. So, uh, you know, this, this shotgun has a 18 inch barrel and then this particular version is their tactical version. It has the goofy uh, door breacher tactical choke on the end of it. Uh, yes, it's a little goofy, guys, and it is tactical, and it is a little mall ninja, uh, but it is very intimidating looking. Uh, you see things like this in movies, and people learn about firearms from movies. They learn to fear or not fear a particular type of firearm because they see it in movies, and I want to say that something like this could deter some people just seeing it. It looks mean. I mean, that's a, you know, sort of a chisel point there. And if I had to use this as an impact weapon uh, in a non-lethal fashion, I wanted to go against somebody's skin, whether it be in the center of their body, up around their face, you could do a lot of damage with just the weight of this firearm behind that very sharp tip. And then, of course, if you needed to use it in a breaching, for a breaching purpose for doors, you also could because it's basically a vented breaching choke. Um, but uh, not necessary, just looks cool. All right, this shotgun features uh, a different type of sight system. A lot of shotguns, a traditional sight system is a, just an open top with a bead front sight and you sight down the top to the bead. Uh, this one features a ghost ring sight system. All right, so you're gonna ghost ring right here. You've got a large white bead sight on the front. That is an XS brand uh, sight system. Uh, I like that sight system. Uh, the ghost ring gives me a little better sighting 
for longer distance shots, say if I'm going to shoot slugs out of this gun, uh, it gives me a very quick sight acquisition for up close, say close quarter type of shooting if I'm in my home and have short, uh, short shots that have to be made quickly. Uh, a ghost ring is used a lot like a holographic sight would be in that you just need to center your target in the center of that ghost ring lined up with your large front sight in order to make that shot because even with a shotgun you have to aim a shotgun uh, anybody that thinks that you can just point a shotgun in somebody's general direction and shoot them and hit them uh, you do not know about shotguns this still has to be aimed now a further upgrade on this particular one I changed the furniture on it and that is the buttstock and the foregrip and that's a personal thing uh, I went with the uh, the Magpul buttstock and the reason I did that first of all honestly I like the way it looks uh, I love the, the look of this buttstock it's very modern looking it does give me a little bit more of a sort of a pistol grip drop here in the grip area uh, a great feature of this buttstock is it has a plate system that goes on the back. You can adjust the length of pull, and that is the distance from the buttstock to the trigger. And I'm, you know, I'm sort of a short guy. I'm five foot nine, five foot ten, and I'm, you know, sort of short and compact in my arms. So the length of pull, I'm very sensitive to that on a long, uh, a long gun or shotgun. The foregrip again is a Magpul piece. Um, again I like the way it looks I hate to say this but most people are not going to be honest about this a lot of the times a firearm is picked because of the way it looks uh, just like anything else just like somebody picks their car because of the way it looks not because it's the only thing with four tires and engine and seats on the inside because let's face it most cars have that you pick it according to the looks and color even and most people are the same with their firearms to a certain degree uh, that foregrip it does have good grip on it that's something you're looking for it does have a stop on the front uh, the back and the front and that keeps my hands from slipping off of that uh, the last thing you want to do on a pump shotgun is be working the pump on this and your hands slip off and go up towards the barrel you do not want that you do not want to shoot through your hand with a 12 gauge shotgun i'm going to tell you that right now uh, the next thing i did add a lot on a light mount on this this light mount is the top that replaces the forward barrel band um, that supports the extended magazine beneath the barrel uh, it is a very close fitting mount um, that's that's important guys and it is accessible with my left hand uh, as my hand is on the the fore end of this shotgun I can just uh, easily I can hit that uh, this flashlight I set up specifically um, for a single output a single high output as a weapon light it is an LED flashlight uh, push in about a thousand lumens output and you need that light uh, just like on my home defense pistol video you cannot jump up in the middle of the night from a dead sleep in the dark and start shooting at shadows in your home you cannot do that guys you have to be able to identify what and who you are shooting at uh, the argument that a light will help your enemy locate you, forget about that. You put a thousand lumens of light in somebody's eyes in pitch black, you are at the advantage, not the disadvantage. Whoever you are signing down on is at the disadvantage. All right, uh, another thing, you see that I added a side saddle to this. The brand as long as you get a quality side saddle the brand it doesn't really matter uh, this is a Mesa tactical side saddle and it's a four round side saddle and you can get them in four round six round I think there's even an eight round side saddle but remember everything that you add to this shotgun is adding weight to it um, 
you need to be able to maneuver this shotgun around your home and if it turns out weighing 12 or 15 pounds guys that's not a good thing uh, it doesn't matter if it's got a toaster oven on it if you can't get this thing out maneuver it quickly and get it on target uh, quickly and use it it's not going to do you any good but that extended round count is fantastic this shotgun does have an extended magazine on it uh, I've got six round capacity with a two and three quarter inch shot shell uh, so I'm six plus one in the chamber that's seven rounds and then I've got four more on the side how many rounds is that that's 11 rounds guys 11 rounds of double lock buck uh, you can do a lot of damage with that throw a couple of more shells down in your pocket before you go out the door or before you respond to any threat and you're good to go with this if you've got your sidearm on you you can fall back from this firearm to your sidearm or to an AR-15 so um, the home defense shotgun guys it's not so much a brand it's not so much the money you spend on it it's the way you set it up you need a good sight system on it and I like ghost ring sights uh, a lot of people like uh, holographic sights red dot sights they're very quick on target but they can cost a little bit because you don't want to put a cheap one on your shotgun there's a lot of recoil energy there and it will mess up a cheap red dot very quickly um, so I like the ghost ring sights as sort of an upgrade over standard sights uh, without being uh, troublesome at all or too complicated um, upgrade your furniture whether it's you know a butt stock to change your length of pull like I needed uh, you're changing the color uh, you want to go to a higher end furniture or you want to use the factory furniture the factory plastic furniture on this shotgun was not bad at all but for me it just had too too long of a uh, length of pull on it at 14 and a half inches and I've got this down at 12 and a half inches now much more comfortable for me um, this foregrip again it adds grip it adds the safety of a stop on the front and the back and uh, it does not interfere with the side saddle on it uh, some foregrips are so long that they will interfere as you draw this foregrip back it will come back and interfere it will impact your side saddle you do not want that add a light to it please add a light to your home defense firearms uh, if it's your pistol if it's your AR-15 if it's your shotgun add a light to it guys please add a light to it do not take chances on misidentifying a threat and harming or killing somebody uh, when you should not remember that's part of the responsibility of being a firearms owner and a firearm user uh, a lot of people upgrade the safety they want a larger safety button on the 870 I haven't done that yet I don't have any issue with this safety um, if I was wearing gloves if I was out in the field uh, in the military I was wearing shooting gloves I may want to upgrade that safety to a, a larger diameter safety button but here in the home with just bare hands it's very easy for me to manipulate I've used cross bolt safeties like this my entire life and it's pretty intuitive for me but you may want to change that it's another thing to consider uh, and consider your the ammunition that you are using the shot shells that you are using uh, do you need slugs in it? Are you going to be taking extended range shots with a slug? Because uh, in your home where you are, you know, what's the, the longest shooting distance within your home? Down a hallway? Is it 25 feet? Is it 30 feet? Um, are you going to have any shoot through issues with a one ounce slug um, coming out of your shotgun at that distance? Um, do you think that a double lock buck or maybe a number four shot uh, you know you've got to be particular about the ammunition you put in just like with your fire other firearms your pistol or your AR-15 again I'm not an expert guys 
research this stuff for yourself. The information is out there. The internet is a bottomless well of information concerning this stuff. Just be sure to separate the information, the real information, from opinion. Uh, and just like everything you've seen in this, this is my opinion, guys. Uh, you don't have to set up a shotgun in this way. You don't have to use the same furniture or the same sights or the same ammunition or the same light uh, that I do. That's just what I use, what I liked, uh, what, what I had available to me. Uh, and I think that overall uh, this type of setup is a great place to start in a home defense shotgun regardless of the type of shotgun that you choose. Just choose wisely. Uh, choose a quality brand, a well-known model, look at the aftermarket support, uh, talk to some firearms people that know these firearms and see what's reliable, what's easy to work on, what is there plenty of parts out there for. Uh, if shit hits a fan and everything collapses, that's one of the reasons I chose an 870. There's parts all over the place for it uh, decades of experience with gunsmiths working on these. They're very easy to work on. They're, they're basically, they're fairly modular, almost like an AR-15. Um, so it would be easier to find parts uh, over a less popular firearm. Uh, let's see guys. The last thing, train. Train with your firearm. It doesn't matter what it is. Train with your pistol, train with your AR-15, train with your shotgun. Remember, this shotgun is not a magic stick. You point at somebody and they instantly disappear in a haze of blood. This has to be ha aimed. Uh, you have to train uh, in case you have any issues with it under duress. What if you have a failure to eject on a spent casing, um, or spent shell, I mean. You need to be able to clear that in the field under duress. Um, you need to be able to work, do basic maintenance, cleaning, lubricating to maintain your firearm. Uh, you need to be able to manipulate this firearm from different shooting positions. You need to not only buy this stuff and have it, you need to train with it. Now, you don't have to go to a school to train on the basic things. Go online, uh, find experts. There's just thousands and thousands of basic training videos that will teach you the foundational skills you need with not only a shotgun, but a pistol or an AR-15. Uh, i tell you what I recommend. Magpul has a series of DVD videos they're very in-depth training. Uh, I've got it for pistols, AR-15s, and shotguns. And even with the amount of training that I've done, when I went through those videos, they go from the most very basic, first time you touched it, up through advanced teamwork with like entry teams, military or police entry teams, even the way they communicate to each other. Uh, that's a very advanced firearm work. And that's something that you can watch in the privacy of your home. Uh, you can learn from it and then you can go out and you can train and work on those skills. Now, if you want to go to a school, hey, go to a school. There is nothing better than live training uh, with an expert instructor uh, that is always recommended for every type of firearm if it is available to you. But in the end, guys, pay more attention to the way you set up your firearm for your home defense and have an action plan with your firearm. Train enough with your firearm to be familiar with it and be safe with it. And I think, hopefully, if you ever have to use it, and let's say, uh, I hope that you never have to use your shotgun to defend your home. I hope you never have to use your pistol. I hope you never have to use your AR-15. I hope society never collapses, that everything in the world gets better and we live in peace.
but I don't think that's realistic. I think you need to be ready, and this is a great way to set up a home defense shotgun to protect yourself and your family. All right, guys, I'm going to keep this short. Once again, I'm going to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. Uh, God bless all of you. Stay safe, and we will talk to you the next time.